Republicans about this immigration debate because it's firing up again this week. The Democratic lawmakers say breaking up families is cruel and unnecessary. The zero tolerance policy means zero humanity and it makes zero sense. Michael Horowitz is going to answer some questions in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee along with Chris Ray. Peter Strzok is willing to testify before the House Judiciary Committee. This guy has the goods on everybody and if he decides to come clean, this could be a really bad day for senior people at the FBI and their decision making. German Chancellor Angela Merkel welcomed one million refugees into her country with open arms and this morning, that move could actually cost her her job. And what a finish by Brooks Kepka. I can't imagine a more appropriate song on a day like this because we are just getting warmed up. It is a Monday. It is the second hour. And we have a lot more TV to do. And special thanks to the Globe, the world for spinning, because we have a lot more news coming our way at a dizzying rate that we almost can't keep up with. Oh, we can. You Don't worry, so? folks. We can keep up with the good stuff. We're so grateful for the Globe. Yes, we are. Yes. And for gravity. Right. right. Oh, my goodness. Stuff like What's that. Going on? Uh, anyway, What's going on for, in there? Thanks for joining us on this right. very busy anti-gravity Monday. Yeah, right. Last week it was North Korea. This week we're going to be talking a lot about immigration. The immigration Good. debate is taking center, center stage this week. The president's going to meet with uh, key senators today and talk about the wall. Then tomorrow he's going to meet with the House Republicans. Yep, it all comes ahead of a meeting with those House Republicans aimlessly. That's going to happen tomorrow as they get ready to vote on two different immigration bills that the president says he would sign either. Now that whole introduction is news to Griff Jenkins. He had a whole different <laughs> report planned. Can you change and do a we want you to do Let's Griff. see how talented you are, Griff. I'm going to try. Stick with me. Today's meeting is with the Senate Appropriations Committee Chairman Richard Shelby and Shelley Moore Capito on the committee who's leading the effort on funding for the border wall because failure to do so, guys, could lead to a shutdown in September. But tomorrow's meeting is with House Republicans on two bills headed for a likely vote this week. One's that consensus bill by the leadership, the other, the conservative good lab bill. Either way, it appears the president wants action. The president is ready to get meaningful immigration reform across the board. Nobody likes seeing babies ripped from their mother's arms off. This is a perilous journey for many of these children. And if people really cared about them, we would figure out a way to get the funding, to expand the centers, and to close the loophole. This is tensions continue to rise over children being separated at the border and the president continuing to blame Democrats, tweeting that they should get together with their Republican counterparts and work something out on border security and safety. Don't wait until after the election because you are going to lose. Finally, guys, there's no word on which bill the president favors or what level of funding he's willing to accept. But one thing's for sure. You guys got it right. It's reaching ahead this week. And you just got to wonder, too, Griff, that if they can get something out of the House and if it's something the president wants if they can get enough red uh blue uh red state governors red state senators who happen to be blue they might feel the pressure to vote for the president's program whether it's tester mccaskill right. uh heidi heitkamp thank you very much griff for that uh great report i, I think griff, we have to go i, I think something <laughs> will get out of the house i think the problem is the senate but here's right. the, here's yeah. the thing. But, but what do you think about what i just said do you think a lot of these blue states could feel the trump pressure yes absolutely i just don't know that there's going to be enough to pass something like this in the senate it all comes down to 60. uh and, and the, you know this is a, a topic where the democrats and republicans seem to be on the same page with the with the president of the united states we all agree we got to fix it. It's a mess. Right now, part of the mess is uh, are all these stories about these children who are being separated from adults at the border. And that's the, what we're talking about this weekend. And the Secretary of Homeland Security wants to make clear what is going on legally with that particular regulation. That's right. She was tweeting a number of tweets, and here are some of them. She says this, uh, this uh, misreporting by members, press, and advocacy groups must stop. It is irresponsible and unproductive. As I have said many times before, if you're seeking asylum for your family, there's no reason to break the law and illegal, illegally cross between ports of entry. You are not breaking the law by seeking asylum at a port of entry. We do not have a policy of separating families at the border, period. For those seeking asylum at ports 
points of entry, we have continued the policy from previous administrations and will only separate if the child is in danger, there is no custodial relationship between family members, or if the adult has broken a law. Right. So that is a, that's a great reminder of if you are crossing the border and you, you do it not at a port of, port of entry, that is illegal. Right. So they are going to arrest the parent. Unfortunately, the child has to be put in the shelter until they figure out what's going to happen with the parent. And then they will be hopefully reconnected and sent back to Mexico or, where, or you know, Central America, whatever the situation is. But if you do have that wall, they can't cross the border. So they're forced to go to the port of entry. And there, they can seek asylum. And if they can prove that they're in danger in their home country, we will let them in. And then right. a judge will decide if they're allowed to stay and they will not be separated from their parents and, and from their a, children and that's a good point because some of these people are just they know the buzzwords to get in there are they're not under pressure but they know when they seek asylum they just say certain things we have to accept them and that needs to be reformed but that still is not separating parents and kids if people do not see the opportunism of so many people now as Nancy Pelosi now heads to the border to look at these facilities it is a it is uh, something that needs to be addressed as all of immigration right. needs to be addressed but they are absolutely blowing the whole thing out of proportion as people rant and act like uh, the president's anti-children. Well, uh, these laws have been on the books for a very long time. You've got, uh, back in 2008, there was something called the Trafficking Victims Act, that's, uh, that's generally uh, the name of it, uh, which mandated that uh, kids must immediately be remanded to the Department of Homeland Security, and then they're going to keep them. Uh, then there was something during the Clinton era called the Flores Settlement Agreement, which mandated as well that the kids have got to be kept as a unit and it makes it harder to send them back to their home countries. These are some of the so-called loopholes the White House says we've got to change. And that's why the president says we need something going on with immigration reform. We had one of the uh, senior editor at large at Breitbart, a fellow by the name of Joel Pollack, uh, with us a little while ago. He actually went to one of the facilities where the children are being held in El Cajon, California. And he said, unlike where they came from in many cases, these people who are caring for them are taking care of them like they've never seen before. They have doctors, they have psychologists, they have trained social workers, administrators, and all of them want to help these children. Often the kids come there without any knowledge of basic hygiene. They come from some of the poorest places in Central America. The staff there give them toiletries, they give them new clothes. They sometimes have to teach them how to shower, how to use a flush toilet. They give them an education. This is a place where they really have the welfare of the kids at heart. and. They come there from Border Patrol facilities. They're in a difficult situation, but the goal is to ring that reunion bell that sits right at the front of the facility. Well, a couple of things. Which would uh, put the parents, if they are the parents, back with the children. And then they, in some cases, they go into the United States. Other cases, they go home. But the other thing is, the, the whole point is, for not through a fall of the United States of America, Mexico, Central America, these countries are a mess. These people are streaming into our border, and there's a surge right now at the border. What do you propose to do and open it up, letting everybody in? Just so you know, all your tax dollars get siphoned off, and all the American citizens will be getting less and less. Our uh, working class will be getting less. Medicare, Medicaid, our school systems get less and less. You have to make a choice. It's not open up your hearts. That's what Ellis Island in the old days was for. Right. America hasn't changed. There's a legal and there's an illegal way to do it. Right. They're choosing the illegal way. Regarding the tax dollars, you know how much it costs the United States government per year per unaccompanied minor? You know how, how much? much we spend? How much? $36,000 a year to make sure that those kids wind up with all that stuff that uh, Joel Pollack is talking about. Nonetheless, it is uh, issue number one up on Capitol Hill. Let's hope they can come to some sort of agreement because it is a mess and it needs to be fixed. Meanwhile, Peter Strzok, the FBI agent, you know, he was, uh, he was working on the Mueller team, the special counsel. Then all of those emails uh, or text messages between himself and, and, and Lisa Page, his girlfriend, they all uh, surfaced. And he was saying, if President Trump if he gets elected, then we're going to st we're going to stop it. He's not going to get elected. That was just such an explosive te text message. He's saying now he wants to testify because he wants you at home to know his story. He want he says that he's um, he's being vilified in the press. His character is being misrepresented. Right. Really? Yeah. How dare we read his words? Sure. How dare we <laughs> misrepresent his text when we read them out loud? Yeah. What has come over us, man? Do we owe this guy an apology? Well, uh, Bob Goodlatte was about to subpoena him to get him to come up to Capitol. Hill and his lawyer sent him a lawyer a letter a lawyer letter and said 
I'll come, I'll sit down, you don't have to worry about me taking the fifth, I'm not, I don't need immunity. So Peter Strzok wants to talk. And don't you want to hear from him? I do. <laughs> right. I do. You. I think we already have. Right. We, we know are, a lot about him. I want to hear the explanation of all <laughs> that stuff we've seen. I want to hear about the trouble. insurance plan, and I want to see the, all those unnamed people, uh, Lawyer 1 and uh, Witness 2, and all these unnamed people that are involved in the 500-page report. And how are you my, planning on stopping it? And my, by the way, my, my, uh, my hope is that these lawmakers read the 500 pages over the weekend, okay. because if they are not prepared to, answer, to ask questions today, uh, to Michael Horowitz and others, they're wasting everybody's time, right. and especially to Peter Strzok. I know for a fact congressional staff members and members were reading it through the weekend. In Good. fact, I met a couple of them uh, on the, at the baseball game that uh, were, knew all about it, were getting copies, and planned to spend the entire weekend reading it because they've been talking about it for a long time. They want to be educated, and i got a feeling by now, a lot of them know exactly what's in it. All right. All right, let's hand it over to Jillian, who has some more headlines for us. Hey, Jillian. That's right. Good Monday morning to you guys, to you at home as well. And let's get you caught up on this. We now know the gunman accused of opening fire at an arts festival was just released from prison. Uh, you all right? She hit? No, no, no. She hit. You all right? Gang member Tehagi Wells was out on parole on homicide charges when police say he shot several people in New Jersey. Democratic Governor Phil Murphy responding, tweeting in part, quote, we cannot let gun violence tear us apart. These are not inappropriate times to talk about gun policy. These are the most important times to talk about gun policy. Two inmates on the run after breaking out of jail through a hole in the wall. A third suspect has been captured. A manhunt expanding for the other two who escaped the Illinois jail near the Indiana border. Security cameras capturing the men inside a cell hours before they used a pipe to smash through a brick wall. Deputies later covering the hole with a metal plate. One of the escaped inmates is facing murder charges. To the moon, to Mars, and beyond. In Washington, President Trump will be outlining his plan for winning the next frontier. The president delivering the keynote address at the National Space Council meeting, which is intended to boost momentum for joint space exploration between the public and private sectors. In December, the president signed an order directing NASA to send humans back to the moon. That's two for the Brooks. Brooks Kepka, that is, is the first back-to-back -back U.S. champ, U.S. Open champ in 29 years. Kepka finishing one over par in the tournament in New York. The last man to accomplish the feat, Curtis Strange, seen interviewing Kepka for Fox after the big win. And talk about Strange. Like Kepka, he repeated at the Open on a New York course. To top it off, the wins marked both of their second ever major victories. Big congrats to him. Indeed. All right. And Ainsley, you had asked uh, where he was from. Yeah, did you find he, out? He was born in West Palm Beach. He went to Florida State. And he lives in Jupiter, Florida right now. Go Knowles. Okay. Go. And he likes steak. No. That was Dan That Bungie. was Dan oh. uh, but he, he may. Right. We who knows? Know for sure. If you know if he likes steak, call us. How do you like your steak cooked? I don't eat steak. I 13 love minutes after the hour. In just Medium a few oil. hours, FBI Director Christopher Ray with a W in his name, and Inspector Michael Horowitz with one as well, will head to Capitol Hill to testify about the Clinton email report. Jonathan Turley went to law school. He says this is bad news for Robert Mueller. He's up next. Plus, remember the business ordered to take down the American flag display? That one? Yep. Because it was too excessive we've got a big update right, they added more flags <laughs> uh, FBI Director Christopher Wray and Inspector General Michael Horowitz heading to the Hill today and tomorrow to discuss the Bureau's handling of the Hillary Clinton probe on the heels of the 500-plus page report. So what can we expect from today's Senate Judiciary hearing? Just a review of what we all read. Let's ask Jonathan Turley. He's a professor at uh, George Washington University. Jonathan, how do we end up, how do we get this hearing past a review of what he wrote? If you're questioning, for example, Horowitz. I think part of the, the, the sort of narrative that's going to play out in this hearing is to get Horowitz to explain the difference between not finding bias and not finding actions caused by bias. I think that what Horowitz said in the report is that there was bias, but he didn't have any documents or no one fessed up to taking actions due to that bias. And that is a critical distinction. Uh, he, would, he refused to make an assumption that these actions were taken for the wrong 
wrong reason unless he had clear proof. That's a responsible thing to do. Now, by the way, that plays in the same way towards President Trump. You know, it, 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 a lot of the theories about obstruction for President Trump make every assumption against the president instead of the more likely motive for firing Comey. Uh, Jonathan, you, you also bring up, by the way, do we know if he talked to Peter Strzok about the so-called plan to stop him or the insurance policy? Do we know if Strzok cooperated? Well, we're assuming that he did because he is still a member of the FBI. It would be really quite remarkable if he refused. That last email came up very late for Horowitz in the process. But I assume when that bombshell went off, right. uh, he got on the phone and pulled him back in. But Jonathan, you also have an interesting thing you told our producers. The IG report makes an already different case, makes a more difficult case for obstruction for Mueller. In what sense? Well, I have a column out in the Hill newspaper on this that, uh, to me, the obstruction claim involving Comey was always difficult, but after the IG, it's become virtually incomprehensible because the IG said that Comey was insubordinate, that he deviated from policies, he violated FBI policies. All those are a good reason to fire James Comey. And so the problem that's going to come up for the critics of President Trump is that this dog just won't hunt when you've got both the IG and uh, the Deputy Attorney General saying he deserved to be right. fired. You can't assume everything against him. There's another interesting aspect here. If, Comey, if, if Mueller was really going after obstruction based on Comey, then Rosenstein would have to recuse himself. Rosenstein said that if Mueller told him that he was a witness, he would remove himself. He hasn't done that, which makes me think it's one of two things. Either Mueller's right. ignoring conflicts of interest or he's not seriously pursuing that angle. <laughs> Incredible. If you remove Rosenstein and Sessions already recused, I think we go to Jonathan Turley uh, for the ultimate decision. <laughs> the last remaining unindicted lawyer. <laughs> Absolutely. You were Napolitano. Thanks, Jonathan. All Thanks. Right. Okay, great. Coming up straight ahead from the battlefield to the classroom, a special program is helping our troops teach the next generation of proud Americans. Two of those heroes joins us live. Time now for your news by the numbers. First, $1.4 million. That's the street value of the ISIS drug stash just destroyed in Syria. U.S. supported forces confiscated 300,000 narcotic pills, nicknamed the jihadist drug. Next, 50. That's how many bills targeting the opioid epidemic House lawmakers are expected to pass this week. 50 of them. They address the distribution of prescription drugs, speed up research on non-addictive painkillers, and make treatment more readily available. And finally, $1.3 million. That's how much one man made in fraudulent returns at Walmarts across the country. He was busted in the state of Arizona, that man right there, allegedly trying to return a computer that he had taken parts out of and then returned it for the full purchase price. He got busted. All right, Ainsley. From the battlefield to the classroom, the program is called Troops to Teachers. It provides funding to education departments, helping new veterans become America's newest teachers. Over 20,000 veterans have transitioned to a career in education, and two of them are joining us now. They're both high school teachers in the Arizona area, former Army Sergeant Frank Contreras and his brother, former Army National Guard Sergeant Chris Contreras. Thanks, guys, for being with us, and thank you for Thanks serving for our us. country. You're welcome. Chris, thank I'll start you. with you. Tell us about this program. Um, the Troops to Teachers program is, is really a good transition program. Um, it helps military members transition into civilian life. It's already a difficult situa uh, situation anyways to transition, but this program really sits down with veterans and military members and gets them the education and uh, the necessary uh, paperwork they need to actually get credentialed and licensed to become a teacher. All right, Frank, how has it changed your life? Um, for me personally, um, I would have never thought I would be a teacher, um, but as I transitioned into the classroom, I saw how many students I was touching in their lives um, for a positive. Um, when I transferred to my current school where I'm at right, right now, um, I actually adopted uh, a student that I had as she was a sophomore. Three years later, as she was a senior, she had a rough home life. She had confided in me and me and my wife decided to make her part of our family. What? So, That's incredible. Yep. How's she doing now? She's great. She's a um, sophomore right now, 
at a community college. Um, she's planning on being an orthodontist. What? So, That's awesome. I have chills. Yeah. You're changing her life. This <laughs> program changed your life and now you're changing hers. That is so sweet of you. All right, Chris, tell yeah. me about you. How has it changed your life? Um, you know, just getting us into the classroom, I always wanted to be a part of something bigger than myself, which is why I was in the military, to serve serve my country. And uh, the program really helped me serve my community. And kind of the same thing as teachers, we get to see all the kids, the lives that we change, and uh, just the impact on all the kids that that, uh, that we have in the classroom and teaching them the skills that, that we know from whether it's civilian uh, careers, degrees, or even in the military, uh, being able to have an opportunity to transfer those morals down to a lot of the high school kids now is just an amazing opportunity and Troops to Teachers allowed us to do that. That's great. Yeah, Frank, what skills did you learn in the military that are helping you and helping these students? Um, a lot of the skills that I learned, um, just hard work, motivation, um, discipline, dedication, a lot of that I turn and I use with my students, I try to implement that in my classroom to where they, know, they not only use that in the classroom, but as they transition into their lives outside of the classroom after they graduate. Chris, what's harder, the military training or teaching high school students with attitudes? <laughs> um, you know, sometimes uh, sometimes it's a toss-up. It depends on the days. You know, high, teaching high school students is uh, is a difficult task sometimes. But uh, you know, I've taught I've taught a little bit of everything, and teaching kindergarten is a lot harder. So more <laughs> respect to the teachers that teach the little guys. I just can't yeah. do it. But um, I think uh, it just depends on the day. But the reward is is always worth it in the end. All right, troops to teachers. Do y'all know the website if folks at home want to want to get more information? Yep, it is www.proudtoserveagain.com. That's great. And that's the national site. Proudtoserveagain.com. We are proud of y'all for serving in so many different ways. You're Thank heroes. You. God you. bless you. Thanks. Thank God you. The video is wild. A truck driver loses control and goes flying through the air on a busy highway. Watch. Wow, wait until you hear what police found inside that truck. And remember the business ordered to take down all those American flags? Well, they said it was too excessive. We have a big update coming up. Look at this. A pair of smart siblings caught in the middle of an escape. <laughs> it is your shot of the morning. That's great. I love it. The little girl with a knack for ditching nap time gets an assistance from or gets assistance from her big brother. The boy you could see pushing the crib until she's able to hop uh, up on the bed and get Genius. out of the crib. Just keeps tilting it. Their mom says they are best buddies and are always conspiring together. Yeah. Apparently in He's this like, way. He's like, wake up, I need a friend. That's all. Right. It's Come like on. it's like a mini Let's MacGyver. Let's we'll go figure play. out a way. You know, the funny thing is when you're little, you hate to eat and you hate to take a nap. And then we get older and that's all we want to do. Right. <laughs> Well, we like the, to eat and then take a nap. The brilliance of this video, though, is that rather than just tip the whole crib over, which would have resulted in right. perhaps injury, the kid pushes it up against the bed, and then you can crawl out. It's He's jailbreak. Smart. He's smart. Won't but he forgot about the. He forgot that mom had a camera in the room. <laughs> I got so. a feeling mom's uh, behind the wheel of that. Um, th that's just great. Has to be <laughs> hidden, though. I have a feeling the kid has done that before. There's nothing better when you're a parent than to sneak in on your child and just listen to their conversation or oh watch them without gosh. them knowing. It's so cute. And then later you'll grab their phone when they sleep and then find out what they're really doing in school. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. She's only That's two harsh. and a half. <laughs> All right. Uh, it is 26 minutes before the top of the hour and Jillian joins us right now and you've got what is being referred to as a bombshell. That's right. Good morning to you guys. And a bombshell investigation is shedding light on the care our veterans are receiving inside nursing homes. The statistics have been hidden until now. Of the 133 VA nursing homes nationwide, 60 received the lowest rating. That's one out of five stars. The VA made the ratings public after USA Today and the Boston Globe began asking questions. President Trump has been calling for the release of the ratings and blamed the Obama administration for keeping them secret. A driver loses control, sending his truck soaring through the air onto the other side of a busy road. Watch this.
right, that truck landing on three cars in Australia. Two women are seriously hurt. The driver is under arrest. Police found drug paraphernalia in his truck. Look at that. A President Trump supporter disrupting Robert De Niro's Broadway play with a Keep America Great flag. This is what happened during the curtain call of a Bronx tale. Audience members say the man waved the flag toward the crowd before he was escorted out of the theater. De Niro is the show's director and starred in the movie. Just last week, as you recall, he was criticized for his profane remarks aimed at the president at the Tony Awards. And you could call this a grand slam. A soldier shocks his girlfriend returning home at a baseball game and then dropping to one knee for an even bigger surprise. Madison Olinger said yes to marrying Army Specialist Cameron Henley in North Carolina. We clicked really fast and I don't know, I feel like we just sparked really fast. <laughs> the soldier had just spent nearly a year away from home, including nine months in Syria. Let's look at your headlines and congrats to them. Oh, that is so special. And <laughs> as Ainsley them. noted, it looks as if it's the uh, the pairing has been endorsed by the mascot. The mascot was going. <laughs> All right. Oh wow! All right. Hi. Yeah. It's, Hi, Jan. Is it hot out there right now? No, it's not that bad, actually. Uh, but it is going to get hot here in New York City. Are you guys ready to be on television? Look at this beautiful crowd that we have here today. Uh, what's your name, young lady? Where are you from? Lauren, and I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay, what's what's happening right here in New York City right now? Weather. 76. 76 degrees, sunny skies. Oh my gosh, amazing. Fantastic, everybody. Let's take a look. <laughs> I love this round of applause. Let's take a look at the Northeast right now, and uh, we have the potential for high heat advisories in place. So 73 right now, going to get up to 92, but with the heat index, going to feel even lo a lot hotter than that, so just be careful. Uh, we do have the potential for showers and thunderstorms across the Great Lakes, but yes, it's going to remain hot for the next couple of days, and then we'll break the heat a little bit. Okay, everybody, say hi to everybody at home. Hi, everybody at home. Look at this. What an amazing crowd. Are you sure you guys are here to see hi, me? Wow, oh, look at the size of the crowd. And they're all around That's the same great. height. Very nice. <laughs> everybody what? They're all around the same height. We did notice that. Right. That was the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> it's incredible. Later, uh, next hour, we're going to weigh them. Uh, let's see how many are left. Uh, all right. Uh, meanwhile, let's tell you about uh, Chelmsford, Massachusetts. Uh, there's a company there called Lair Realty, and they had this great idea. Out on our lawn, we're going to put as many American flags as we can. And you know what? They were able to put 200 American flags there. And people loved it, apparently, until they realized the man from code enforcement for the town left a note. You're going to have to take him down because you're violating an ordinance. Oh, well, you and many people around the world didn't like that. So they sent letters, phone calls, and now that man has a change of heart. He says the intent wasn't to be anti-patriotic or anti-American, but clearly there's a tremendous love of this country as demonstrated with the American flag, and I think we're all better for it in the end. Mm -hmm. He is going to allow the flags to stay now. now so John you, Crandall weighed in and said yeah, he, he helped do it and expand the flag arsenal. We always support our veterans and uh, Memorial Day is a big time for our country to uh, support all the fallen and all the deceased, all that died in the line of duty. And um, in addition to all the parades that go on on that day, it's a big time. We only had 200 out. The previous year, we had 420 out, uh, which was a full box. Uh, this year, we had 200 out. We split them up, and I put some in another town. Um, so to be excessive, it was really, it was beautiful, but it was certainly not excessive. And uh, I don't think you could have 2,000 out there and it would look as excessive. Okay, so they started with 200. So many people were incensed by the fact that the town was telling them to take it down. <laughs> the number of flags grew to 700. And now, as Ainsley said, the town manager says, you know what, we're going to have a meeting. We're going to change the laws. We're all better for it. So... In the end, it all worked out. And the reason was you couldn't have the flags in that town, according to the law or the rules in that law, if you use a flag for advertising purposes. Right. So that's what he was thinking was happening. It's a then... business. They're using flags. How dare Come they? Come on. All right. Uh, Crazy. Anyway, yeah. the flag wins. Let us know what you think about it. Okay. Uh, we're going to have uh, one of the guests from mm -hmm. that uh, agency. And the CEO of the company.
coming up in about an hour. Meanwhile, we've got a Fox and Friends exclusive. The political left is begging the Trump administration to keep dreamers in the country, but a brand new report says many of those dreamers are criminals. We've got the numbers that nobody has seen, and that on the other side of a timeout. That would immediately disqualify them from staying. Plus, you love our friend Dean Kane as Superman, but now he's hanging up the cape and joining a group, a new group of heroes. be coming to a close get this the new england patriots quarterback tells oprah who's the only person to really open up to retirement is on his mind i think about it more now than i would than i used to yeah i think now i, I think that i'm seeing that there's definitely an end coming um sooner rather than later well, it would have been great if you told us before we trade garoppolo wouldn't it the five-time Super Bowl champ says he wants to make sure he's around for his kids as they grow up. It took him till 42 to realize that. And World Cup celebrations register an earthquake in Mexico. Lozano, cutting, looking, shooting. Lozano, go, Mexico leads. And Mexico wins. Thousands of fans jumping up and down after that score setting off seismic sensors in Mexico City. Mexico won one nothing against the number one team in the world, favored to win another World Cup, Germany. Who was the idea was it to put the country together? East and West used to be beatable. Steve. All right, Brian, uh, we've got a Fox News and Fox and Friends exclusive. The Department of Homeland Security is sharing never before released data that gives an in-depth look at the number of DACA requesters who have arrest records. New data shows that nearly 13% of total DACA recipients had a previous arrest. However, arrests did not always result in criminal or civil charges or convictions. Hear more with the exclusive statistics is Director for U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, Francis Cisna, joins us from our nation's capital. Francis, good morning to you. Good morning. Okay, so why did you put these numbers together? So I run the agency that administers DACA, and as your viewers may know, we're still, we still have DACA. It's still in the books. The courts are not letting us take it down. And while we're doing that, I wanted to put out as much data as possible about DACA uh, so that the public and lawmakers know the full universe of, of data that we have uh, so they can make informed policy decisions. Now, our agency isn't just putting out information about DACA. It's trying to put out in the interest of full transparency as much data about all visa programs as possible. And we have published in the past few months DACA about uh, data about DACA applicants, including what countries they're from, what their educational levels are, uh, what, uh, whether they needed interpreters, right. uh, all this sort of information. Um, this is just the latest in a stream of information that we're putting out on DACA okay. so that people have a better inf information. All right, uh, so some of this data is uh is shocking. Uh, we've got another graphic to show people. Uh, the number of DACA requesters, people asking for DACA protections, who had more than one arrest, it's 55% were approved, right? That's right. So the, um, the rules for DACA are that you are excluded from DACA if you have a felony conviction, a three misdemeanor convictions, three or more misdemeanor convictions, okay. or a conviction for a significant misdemeanor. So you have to have a conviction on those. You could be arrested a whole lot of times and still get DACA. Francis, who came up with the three times uh, for each of those things? Who, who, I mean, you would think that if you, if you were involved in uh, something big, for instance, some of the people on this list were accused of murder, you would think that it would be one and done, you'd be out. Well, now the data that we're putting out is only arrests. So uh, presumably those people who had murder arrests or rape arrests or other arrests of that type of seriousness uh, either got acquitted or the charges were dropped or they pled down or something, I would hope. Uh, but there are a lot of crimes on the list that we publish of misdemeanors mm -hmm. and they could have been convicted and still gotten DACA if they only had up to two of those misdemeanors. 
Right, so it's uh, three and you're out. Uh, That's right. We've got one more graphic. The top offenses of approved DACA requesters with a prior arrest record. Uh, about 40% were related to driving, excluding DUI. 22% uh, immigration related, 12% theft, larceny, and about 9% drug related. But you, you did say that a number of people had uh, arrest for murder, rape, you know, you name anything and somebody's on the list who committed that. That's right, and I think what, what I would like uh, people to keep in mind, in particular policymakers on the Hill uh, who are discussing all this stuff right now, is whatever they do, uh, I would hope that we at USCIS uh, retain the discretion to be able to turn down somebody for whatever benefit that we're contemplating for these people. If we think they're a public safety threat, even if they don't have a conviction. There are a lot of situations where you could have someone who's a gang member or something like that. They may not have a conviction, but I would like my agency to be able to deny that person the benefit, uh, mm -hmm. even if they don't have an actual conviction. I know, Francis, right now, uh, Congress this week is going to try to attempt to come up with a solution. But if lawmakers are watching, how would you uh, give them guidance? I would say, uh, li like I just said, uh, continue to give the agency, as we have right now under current DACA rules, give us the discretion to deny people this benefit, uh, this legalization, if we think that they're a public safety threat, even if they don't have a conviction. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, Francis Cisna, we thank you very much for joining us from our nation's capital, and thank you for sharing these exclusive numbers with our Fox & Friends audience. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. It's about 10 minutes before it's, uh, the top of the hour. Straight ahead, German Chancellor Angela Merkel welcomed one million refugees into her countries with open arms. And this morning, that move could cost her her job. Plus, Ted Cruz took on Jimmy Kimmel one-on-one -on -one in basketball. Ted Cruz won. Carly Shimkus here is a reaction pouring in on social media. She's next. But first, on this day in 2009, Boom Boom Pow by the Black Eyed Peas was topping the charts. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> that got my attention because in the teleprompter it says he rips his shirt off. <laughs> he once wore a cape as Superman, but actor Dean Cain is trading it in for a police badge. That's right. The actor will soon swear in as a reserve police officer in St. Anthony, Idaho, in their police department. Wow. Uh, the news is lighting up social media, so here to react is Fox News 24-7 uh, reporter Carly Shimkus, who we know personally. Yes, you do. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure, right. always. Hey, yeah, I used to watch that show. That brought me back. The man of steel man is becoming a real police That's officer. That's true. Reserve. And, you know, I love what he had to say about this. He says, real heroes don't wear capes. Real superheroes wear uniforms and badges and stethoscopes. Real superheroes are members of our military, law enforcement, and first responders. Love that. Isn't That's that true. great? So his uh, grandfather was in the Navy. He says he's always been able to identify with law enforcement and military members. So now he's going to become a reserve police officer. And you can't hate way, that. And the flying nun proved you didn't need a cape to fly. Right? That's, I mean, that kind of blew up that whole right. thing. Yeah, okay. What's well, the to, uh, online reaction? Let's get to the social media reaction. Amy says, man, if he pulled me over, I'd write my own ticket <laughs> and ask him to sign it. Oh, boy. Uh, Cindy says, what a way to serve God and your community and children. Respect, sir. Thoughts, thoughts and prayers. And Jay also says, it's a good thing you are faster than a speeding bullet. Dean, best of luck. You, sir, are a true patriot. How about that? That's really cool. A lot of support all, all right. around. So he is a super speedy as Superman. It was not exactly a Superman-like performance when Ted Cruz took on Jimmy Kimmel, and yet uh, everybody's buzzing about it as to who won. Okay, so Ted Cruz won the, the game. 11-9. So 11-9. There's, there's a little bit of a backstory here. So Jimmy Kimmel, uh, during one of his monologues in, in one of the episodes of his show, he made fun of Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz responded by saying, you want to settle this on the basketball court for a one-on-one -on -one charity game Jimmy Kimmel then responded saying, yeah, let's Good. do it. Let's do it for a non-political charity. The money went to Texas Children's Hospital and Generation One. Uh, the best part was how low the score was, 11 to 9. A lot Jimmy of defense. Kimmel won. <laughs> they were only supposed to go to 15, but they cut the game short. Because it was going, it was for, going two for two hours. hours. Unbelievable. Right. Wait, the Houston Chronicle, they called it a slow motion car crash of... <laughs> 
court well, when can basketball. we see it? It's gonna, they're going to air it tonight, I think, you I'm think? sure that Kim Does will anyone got want to see it. Air it on his show. Oh, I want to see it. But to Jimmy Kimmel, really who mocked him, lost to him. Yeah. Called him a blobfish. Yeah, well, Karma. Yeah. Well, give, give him some credit for actually doing this, That's right? Awesome. Saying, listen, yeah. we don't agree politically, but we're going to, you know, do this for a charity. A good yeah. cause. Oh, that's right. So Michael says, such an amazing display of freedom. Only, only in America can both sides hash it out in a friendly game of basketball. My <laughs> respect. So, well, you great. know, praise on both sides that's for this. That's great. Can hardly wait to see the video. Yeah, have about right. that. Yeah, I can wait. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. That's good. Uh, thank good you, sports. Carly. He Thanks, vowed Carly. to stop President Trump from winning the election. And this morning, disgraced FBI agent Peter Strzok says he wants to testify before Congress. Law professor Alan Dershowitz is here to react from his bunker. Plus, former President Barack Obama could be going back to school. What's that about? We've got an explanation coming up. Only Invisalign.